Hello, I'm Extreme Darian, and this is part 6 of the 360 rotation tutorial. So, in this segment, I'm going to be um, keying the green screen and otherwise processing the footage so we can get our alpha layer and we can put something behind me or your actor or whatever. Uh, but before we can do that, we need to um, process the original footage from the camera so we can get it into After Effects. Uh, and what I'm going to do that is use a little program that I really like. It's called Virtual Dub. Um, you can get it at virtualdub.org. And um, it doesn't support every um, format imaginable. You'll have to have the right codec for whatever it is, but it does import a lot of stuff. It's just what I use. So. I'm going to get one of the original files from my camera and open it up. And here it is. And what's nice about Virtual Dub is you can make quick little edits to the footage before you um, save it. Um, so um, I only need the footage to go to about here, give myself some slack. So then to edit something out, you go to Edit, Set Selection, Start. It'll put a little tick there and drag to where you want to stop editing. Um, set selection end, it'll select it, then you can just go to edit, delete, and it's gone. And uh, up at the front, uh, actually if it's at the beginning for some reason all you need to go is edit, selection, set selection, end, and it's good. Let's press delete. Okay, now uh, you need to set up the uh, format. So um, go to audio, to set up the format for the audio. Um, you want to set full processing mode because sometimes the audio from camera footage can be in a weird format and it'll mess up After Effects or something. So this means that it'll, it will process the audio. It won't leave it in its original format. Then you just go up to compression and select what you want to compress it, compress it to. Um, I usually do no compression. It uh, Uncompressed audio isn't all that big. Meh. Then go to video, also full processing mode, default there, and go to compression. And Kutu uncompressed, but that makes really big files. So instead I'm going to use um, one of two codecs that I really like. Like the Huffy UV, or however it's pronounced, it might be Huffy UV or Huff, I don't know. But anyway, or the Ligarith lossless codec. These are both lossless codecs, so they will not degrade your footage no matter how many times you um, uh, re-encode them, um, at least in theory, I think. <laughs> and they're both free, and um, they really do a good job of compressing the footage, but you can still import them into After Effects, which is not true of a lot of codecs. Just to give you an example, I, have it, I had the original 35 second clip that was this um, uncompressed 961 megabytes, ouch, um, in Huffy 409 megabytes, in Ligarith 303. Uh, now I mentioned Huffy, Huffy because it's great and it might be a little more uh, merciful on older machines. Ligarith seems to run really well under all the machines I've tried it on, but if you have any problems with it, you can use Huffy. Still really good and still a lot better than uncompressed. So, yeah. I'm going to use Legarth. Click OK. Then just go to Save as AVI. So, go back into After Effects. And just drag it over and drag it down and, it'll, and it will make the right composition size for the footage. Um, which is what we want. So then, um, what we want to start out with is go to Keying over here in the effects and start out with a little color range. Drag it down onto the footage and um, here this one selects the base color that you want to edit out and if you don't see this checkerboard um, uh, image in the background which um, tells you that that is going to be transparent um, Click this little button down here, it toggles between uh, your background color, which is set in here, um, and uh, this. And so I just selected that color, and that said that it was the base color that we're going to be using. And you can add to the color that it's going to edit out by using this one. So I need these other shades of green to go to, so I'll just click them, 
and you'll start to clean it up pretty well. Uh, one thing that you might try, this is um, pretty clean footage, so I can go through here and I can just use one color range to get it out and I won't get um, and I won't get in any problems going on, but sometimes what happens is if there's a lot of spillover from the green on clothing or something, um, you'll be going through and it'll start putting holes in whatever you're trying to holes in your actor. Um, so what can be really useful is use more than one color range. Like I'm gonna say that one was for the lighter colored green that's not in shadow. Then drag in another one for the darker colors. And uh, you know I've had five or six color ranges going at once and um, that can really help clean up footage that has problems. But we don't really need to do that for this footage, so I'll just do this. And that's looking pretty good, and what you want to do is scrub through it looking for that. Yeah. So take that out. You too. There we go. Continue scrubbing. And it's looking pretty good. And another really good effect for keying is key light. And not all versions of After Effects will have it. It used to be a professional only effect. I don't know what it's doing now. But if you don't have it, you can get along without it. But if you have it, use it. So drag it over underneath of this. And we'll just switch off color range for the moment. What this is really good at doing is removing the green spillover. Because if you look, you know, you can still see green fringes um, around with just the color range going. So turn that off, then take this little squeezy thing, <laughs> or whatever it is, and select the color that's going to be the most prone to spillover. Okay, now as you can see, there still that um, did a good job spillover, but it for one thing, it made us slightly transparent, as you can see by switching that on and off. I am transparent, and it didn't take out this stuff. Um, but that's what we had the color range for, which will take out all that other stuff. But if you look, we're still transparent. So what you want to do with that, go down to matte, or yeah, down to matte, get a simple choker. You have to remember that these effects are applied in order and that does make a difference. Okay, so what I'm going to do is drag over two copies of simple choker. Um, now they're both set at zero right now so they, they're not doing anything. But what they do is they either expand or shrink the transparent areas of your image, the alpha layer. Um, so on this first one, if I move the number up, it's going to expand those holes in me that I'm trying to get rid of. But if I bring the number down, it'll start to fill them in. And that's what I'm going for. It looks like about minus one will take care of the holes. Uh, yeah. But now we have these kind of ugly edges that we didn't have before. So that's where the second one comes in. So now I'm going to move this number into the plus range and it's going to bring down those edges. And it doesn't bring back the holes because the first simple choker took those out. That's what I meant by it makes a difference that these work in order. Um, this one couldn't take down the edges without expanding those holes if this one wasn't removing the holes. So, and I think this is okay. Now, I mean, this is, I'm by no means a keying expert. I came up with this method myself and it's by no ne means perfect, but I think this looks pretty good. But of course we're not done because for one thing, um, still have these bars at the edges, um, but more importantly, my hands go off of the green screen a few times. And believe it or not, that's going to take me an entire segment to um, explain how to get rid of. So, um, yeah, 10 minutes goes by really quickly. So, uh, yeah, 
and it's just ending. See you next time.